obviously as a journalist there are stories that you become incredibly attached to because you feel you've covered them a lot so I went as a student I was already in Yugoslavia for the first time in, in 1982 I was then back as a journalist in 1988 during the early 80s so late 80s early 90s I was East Europe editor a lot of work on the Balkan Wars and so on and then continuing to watch Slobodan Milosevic the Serb leader doing these horrendous things through the 90s and, and never quite falling in 2000, we had these elections and it really looked as though Milosevic might fall. And all of us journalists were cooped up in Montenegro nearby um, where and we couldn't get into Serbia because there were absolutely no visas being given. And it was like day after day, you were reporting with this dumb dateline from Steve Crawshaw in Montenegro. And you think, yes, I should be in Belgrade. And uh, a friend said, you know what? I kind of know a friend who could probably give you a visa. And so basically, I end up in a Montenegrin bar handing over my passport and a huge wadge of Deutschmarks um, to get a visa. And then it comes back, I think probably a genuine visa and just simply fallen off the back of a truck. So a stolen visa, I suspect, um, put it in. And I then went in on the night train. And there's this incredible privilege of watching things, but all the time thinking, I'm on fake paperwork. What the hell am I doing here? And again, it was a kind of nice indie thing that I told the foreign editor on the phone, sort of, you may have an interesting date line soon, but couldn't speak too much because I assumed the phone was sort of being being listened to. Um, and then managed to report. That was great. And no one actually checked my visa. It was only when I was flying out that I looked a little bit more carefully at my visa and realized it doesn't even have a number on the visa. So even like the dumbest policeman would have recognized this is a fake visa. And this was only like a year after NATO had been bombing uh, Serbia. So like, no, I was kind of from an enemy country. So incredibly lucky. It was one of those stories really of just journalism, which is kind of mixtures of good luck. And, and yeah, you just kind of hold your breath, basically. Uh, I often think you should never have done that. But of course, the other bit of me thinks I'm so glad that I did it because that enabled me not just to see the beginning of that story, but to see the final end of Milosevic falling and then he ended up behind bars, down behind bars at the uh, war crimes tribunal in The Hague. So, yes, that was fun.